Coming up. Anyone who has studied the history of World War II knows of the famous date which will live in infamy, when the Empire of Japan launched a crippling surprise attack on the American fleet at Pearl Harbor. But what many people do not know is that just a few years earlier, the Japanese secretly launched another surprise attack from the air that attempted to bait the United States into war. In this video, we will take a look at the forgotten attack of the USS Panay that set the tone for the coming bombing of Pearl Harbor. Enjoy the second episode of my new series, Battle Breakdowns, and one of the most interesting stories of World War II. Hey guys, what's up? TJ here, and before we get into this story of the secret Japanese attack, I want to thank Keeps for sponsoring this video. I know all of you guys, just like me, dream of opening up that cockpit and feeling the wind in your hair. But in order to do that, we need to make sure that we keep the hair that we do have. This is actually a pretty big problem. Two of three guys will actually experience hair loss before the age of 35. And guess what? The best way to prevent that is to do something while you actually still have hair. Keeps offers subscriptions for topical solutions, daily prescription pills, or simple strengthening shampoos and conditioners for whatever option you're looking for. And if you don't know what you need, a Keeps doctor can answer any of your questions 24 hours a day and help you track your progress. And best of all, Keeps offers generic versions of FDA approved treatments, which makes it much more affordable than other options. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash tj3history or click the link in the description to get 50% off your first order. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash tj3history. Now, without further ado, enjoy this incredible tale of the secret Japanese air attack. In the summer of 1937, Japan invaded China in an attempt to retake the valuable lands and resources that were located there. Being an island nation, Japan needed access to plentiful supplies to fuel its growing empire. China was an ideal target due to its location and the fact that it was already viewed essentially as the enemy because of the frequent wars and tense relations throughout their history. The United States were strictly neutral in foreign affairs during this time and wanted to remain separate from outside conflicts. The Japanese, however, while officially still held a similar peace stance, did have a growing number of factions within the military that did have a hatred for the Americans who were allied with China. This would play a huge role in the events to come. As the Japanese pushed inland, many Chinese civilians and foreigners attempted to evacuate and escape due to the reputation for brutality that had been building around the invaders. As they approached a city named Nanking, thousands of residents began to flee. Day after day, the fury of war sends new hordes from corner to corner, laden with rags and tatters of their broken lives. Standing offshore from the doomed city is the United States gunboat Panay of the Yangtze Patrol, our officers anxiously scanning the waterfront for signs of American refugees. The Panay is the only haven of safety left to Americans trapped in the burning and besieged Chinese capital. Some of those people were citizens of the United States, specifically staff of the U.S. Embassy and a handful of American journalists. Preparations are rushed to evacuate the American Embassy in Nanking. Diplomats representing the United States government suspend their difficult tasks for a while at least, pack important state papers, and head for the Panay in cars prominently marked with the American colors. The ship that was sent to help them evacuate was the USS Panay, a U.S. Navy River gunship. It was stationed in the area and specifically assigned to patrol the Yangtze River. On December 11th of 1937, the civilians and embassy workers departed from Nanking and boarded the Panay. After their objective was successfully completed, the ship departed and headed back up the river for safer waters, away from the war zone. The following day, however, the war zone would come to them. On the morning of December 12th, the Panay and three fleeing oil tankers from the Standard Oil Company were anchored in the river about 20 miles from Nanking. As the sun arose over the Yangtze, a group of aircraft were heard overhead. After watching them fly overhead for a few minutes, a disturbing yell comes from the deck of the Panay. They are diving, shouts one of the crewmen, and just a few moments later, a bomb barely misses the anchored ship.
Moments later, other planes follow suit, opening fire with their machine guns and lining up bombing runs of their own. During this time, the Chinese Air Force was extremely weak and scattered, so it could only be Japanese aircraft. Now, it is crucial to point out this detail. There were a great deal of Chinese boats along the many miles of the Yangtze River, many of which came under attack since they were at war with Japan. The Panay, however, had made it a priority to place multiple United States flags clearly and prominently on all sides of the ships, to make it abundantly clear that it was, in fact, an American vessel. These flags can clearly be seen here, displayed in a perfect location to be easily seen from the air. This would be an extremely important detail later on. And here you may see even more closely how prominently the American flag was flown as it was at all times during this international incident. Now, regardless of these flags, the attacks from the air continued. The machine guns on board the Panay fired a life, attempting to ward off the attackers. Here, the real footage from the attack can be seen, taken by the American journalist Norman Alley, showing the brave and valiant attempts by servicemen to protect their ship. Planes appear. The ship has been bombed by Japanese Navy planes. The call to battle stations and the Panay crew rushes to defend their craft against the sudden, unwarranted, unheard of attack. The ship's machine gunners go into action, some of them half clad. The captain is wounded, so are others. The ship is a shambles, but whatever the cause of the unmerciful attack, the Panay men will fight to the end. Unfortunately, their attempts would be in vain. As the attack carried on, their machine gun fire would prove to be ineffective as more than 12 aircraft repeatedly attacked their riverboat. Soon after the first shots rang out, a bomb would score a direct hit on the Panay, critically damaging the ship. As it began to take on water and the situation looked increasingly dire, the captain ordered his crew to abandon ship. By this time, three of the 73 on board the boat have been killed and multiple servicemen and civilians are critically injured. They immediately take to the lifeboats and head to shore. Some were seen jumping overboard and attempting to swim to the muddy land nearby. last lifeboat, a motor sampan steering for the nearest land, and an oil tanker. Three accompanied the Panay. The Japanese warplanes bombed them too. They take refuge on a small island, and there they can see the tankers burn. There were multiple reports that survivors and lifeboats were strafed by aircraft as they attempted to make it to shore, only confirming the reports of Japanese brutality that they have no doubt heard about. Upon making it to the shoreline, the survivors watched their doomed boat slowly sink. Two of the journalists filmed the Panay as it begins to capsize. The realization of what has happened sinks in as the last part of the ship slowly sinks underwater. In addition, the three standard oil tankers are also sunk with more casualties. The Japanese planes head home victorious as their targets burn below. The ordeal is far from over for those who have made it to shore, though. They have many wounded and have to trek for three days to make it to safety. Through freezing temperatures and no food, they finally find a village to rest at and nurse their injuries that night. One of the wounded would die in the darkness before they continued onward. Eventually, while avoiding the Japanese patrols nearby, they make it to the nearest friendly American and British ships they can find. The trip back is by sampan down narrow creeks and canals. Slow and tiresome, but not as slow and tiresome as their long trek inland had been under fear of bomb and bullets. Ali suffers from wounds too, but he's still able to do his share. The British ship Ladybird awaits them. She was considerably damaged by Japanese shell fire at Wuhu, but she's not out of commission, and her mission is an errand of mercy for her American cousins. The United States ship Oahu joins the rescue fleet. 
and the American victims of the vicious bombing are put aboard to be carried to Shanghai by an impressive funeral flotilla. In an astounding strike of irony, the ship that would pick them up would be the U.S. Navy riverboat USS Oahu, foreshadowing the next Japanese air attack on the very island just four years later. Following the incident, the American public was outraged. The footage taken by Norman Alley and Eric Mayle, two of the journalists that were there, would be put into a short film and distributed across the country. In addition, many newspapers covered the incident. In response, the Japanese immediately claimed responsibility and apologized for the attack. For many people, it did not make sense at all since Japan and the United States were at peace. They offered the U.S. a large sum of money, more than $2 million, as recompense for the incident. They claimed that it was an accident and that their pilots never saw the American flags. Officially, they stated that it was a result of reckless flying from their pilots. However, as I mentioned earlier, the U.S. flags can clearly be seen on the USS Panay. In addition, they were specifically positioned for aircraft to see. Later on, information would also be found revealing that the pilots attacking were operating under direct orders during the event. This was kept secret from the American public until many years later. Because of this, many historians believe that the attack on the USS Panay was intentional. But then why would the Japanese government apologize and offer repayment? Some historians believe that the chaos in the attack on Nanking offered a good opportunity for certain groups in the Japanese military to attempt to create a conflict. As stated earlier, there were large factions in Japan that hated the United States passionately. These groups wanted to try and draw the U.S. into war and likely saw this as an opportunity, then organized an attack against the lone American vessel, and if their plan had worked, they may have drawn the United States into war. Other historians, however, believe that it may have been an opportunity for the Japanese to test American willpower and ferocity. How would the United States respond to such an attack? Would they come together and respond with a show of their military strength? or step backward and fall back on their policy of neutrality? An answer to these questions would gauge the American fighting spirit. In this scenario, this incident would no doubt be used to plan the attack on Pearl Harbor as a basis of how they might expect the U.S. to respond to a surprise attack. Whatever the cause might have been for the attack on the USS Panay, I believe that we can all agree that it is one of the most interesting stories of World War II and may certainly have had significant impact on the attack at Pearl Harbor years later. Its importance and legacy should not be forgotten. I hope you enjoyed this historical recreation. Please make sure to click subscribe and comment if you have any ideas for future videos. If you want to support my content and get awesome bonus videos, please check out the Patreon link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.